Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The Shulamite. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore the virgins love you, draw me away. The daughters of Jerusalem. We will run after you. The Shulamite. The king has brought me into his chambers. The daughters of Jerusalem. We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. The Shulamite. Rightly do they love you. I am dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. To her beloved. Tell me, O oh, whom I love, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon. For why should I be as one who veils herself by the flocks of your companions? The Beloved. If you do not know, O fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's tents. I have compared you, my love, to my filly among Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are lovely with ornaments, your neck with chains of gold. The Daughters of Jerusalem. We will make you ornaments of gold with studs of silver. The Shulamite. While the king is at his table, my spikenard sends forth its fragrance. A bundle of myrrh is my beloved to me that lies all night between my breasts. My beloved to me is a cluster of henna blooms in the vineyards of Engedi. The Beloved. Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes. The Shulamite. Behold, you are handsome, my beloved. Yes, pleasant. Also, our bed is green. The beams of our houses are cedar and our rafters of fir. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. You know, Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. He's wise. And he understood what that meant. His wisdom did not only flow in the areas of daily administration and management as a king, but he dreamed of something bigger, something fuller, something more meaningful than any wealth or wonder that Solomon might achieve. The fulfillment of love. That's right, love. He writes about this love from God's point of view for the Lord's people, for God's church. He created and established it by Jesus Christ. And the church has survived in the most dark and dismal places in the world and throughout time. The Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, is a unique type of Hebrew poetry. It is meant to expose the meaning of real love, which is God's love for his people and the love of his people that they have for him. Now, I believe that this poem was written for two reasons. Number one, to demonstrate God's amazing love for us. And number two, to show what our love can be like for him and our spouses if we follow Jesus Christ to work in our lives. Beloved, we need to understand as we go in the Song of Solomon that we are, we're talking about love. And, you know, Hollywood and many other entertainment community pieces have their ideas about love. And our culture has its idea about love. And people have their idea about love. But, but what is love really? What is true love? It's more than a feeling. It's more than lust. It's more than desiring something. What is love? Now think about that as we go into this because God is showing us how he expresses love and what this means. Very important. 
Get your Bible guide out and turn to today's passage as we look at today's scripture. And if you don't have a Bible guide, just write to us. The address is at the bottom of the screen. Or you can call us too uh, at the phone numbers and we'll be there. And if we're not, if it's not office hours, then just leave a message and we'll get back to you. Or you can go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. And when you go there, click on donate and make a donation, whatever God speaks to your heart make a donation. And we trust that that is, we trust the Holy Spirit work in you. And that is God's word to us. So thank you so much for doing that. But let's pray today and ask God to show us the truth about love. Father, I, I really ask that you would clarify this idea and help us to remember who you are. Help us to understand the idea about love. Lord, as we read this today, celebrating God's love, help us to hear what you're saying in the name of Jesus Christ. And we all said together, amen. As we think that through, let's go into the scripture, Song of Solomon. And it's a play, chapter one, verses one to four. It says, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. The Shulamite. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name, your name is ointment, poured faith. Think about that. Therefore, the virgins love you. Draw me away. Now the daughters of Jerusalem say, we will run after you. And the Shulamite says, the king has brought me into his chambers. And the daughters of Jerusalem say, we will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. And the Shulamite says, rightly do they love you. Isn't that something? This is amazing. Listen, the salvation of God is not an intellectual revolution. It is a spiritual reality. Love is spiritual. That's important because a lot of people think love is how you feel about someone. No, it's not. It's spiritual. I mean, that's part of it. But the spiritual aspect of this is really key. Now, with that in mind, let's go back to the scripture and learn this. In chapter one, verse five, it says, I am dark, but lovely. O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards but my own vineyard I have not kept. Then she says to her beloved, tell me, O oh, you whom I love, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon, for why should I be as one who veils herself by the flocks of your companions? And now the beloved says to her, if you do not know, O oh, fairest of women, follow in the footsteps of the flock, and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's tent. I have compared you, my love, to my filly among Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are lovely with ornaments and your neck with chains of gold. This is amazing. See, here we see something else. God loves his people. God loves us, beloved. It's something we have to understand. We should love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. Do you know... When we say beloved to you, do you realize that means God loves you? When we call you beloved, when we say beloved, we mean ones who God loves. Isn't that amazing? Actually, Paul the apostle started that treatment of beloved back in the Bible. And so that's what we remember. God loves us and he desires to show us. He desires to tell us. He desires us to be willing to accept his love for us. Not to get in arguments and talk about this and that. He'll answer every question. But let's go back to the scripture and watch this now. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 11 through 17. The daughters of Jerusalem say, We will make you ornaments of gold with studs of silver. And the Shulamite says, while the king is at his table, my spikenard sends forth its fragrance. Verse 13 continues, a bundle of myrrh is my beloved to me. That lies all night between my breast. My beloved is to be, is 
to me a cluster of henna blooms in the vineyards of Engedi. And then the beloved says to her, listen carefully, behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes. And then the Shulamite says, behold, you are handsome, my beloved. Yes, pleasant. Also, our bed is green. And the beams of our houses are cedar and our rafters of fir. Isn't that amazing? You see, this is what we learn. God holds those who love him in perfect strength. God strengthens us. We are sustained by the strength of God and not our own. I get excited when I talk about this because, you know, we can't do anything. But when God looks at us and God begins to love us, then suddenly the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us, God's hands are inside of us. And he manifests or makes known himself to the world through us. And we don't say, oh, that's because of us. No, no, that's because of God. And we have submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We have submitted to the Lordship of God. And when we do that, God uses us. I think that's amazing. Now, this is, an, this is tr totally astounding, this, this uh, song of songs. It's amazing. And with that in mind, we come to this prayer. Listen carefully. We pray, Lord, I want to celebrate my love for you today. I want to celebrate my love for you today. How do we do that? We do that by submitting to God, trusting the Lord, and fulfilling his desire in us. That's the idea of a relationship with Jesus Christ. <music>